know when you're ready. Good morning, good morning, Boston. Good morning. This is the BG Report on Boston Praise Radio. Welcome across the city, welcome across the state, and welcome across the world. We have a lot going on, on a, right now, and um, you know, it, it, a lot of it is still troubling. It troubles me that we are faced with this, the racism, the killings, and it's just a time when, when I don't know, oftentimes it leaves me speechless. Well, I'm- You're speechless? Well, you know, <laughs> I get that way. I'm not the most articulate person in the first place, but you know, I, I try to speak from my heart. And uh, by the way, I want to introduce my guest, my lovely guest, my guest co-host, uh, Priscilla Flint Banks. Good morning, honey. Good morning, dear. How are you today? I'm doing great. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes, it's a wonderful day in the neighborhood. Yes, right? it is. Yes. It is. Yes, it is. As long as we're on this side of the grass. Amen. God is good all the time. <laughs> all the time. And definitely. all the time, God is good. All the time. And we have a new engineer this morning, Pastor yes, Hobbs. Yes, someone is not <laughs> or not unfamiliar with with, the, <laughs> with being here, but he's definitely our new engineer today. Yes, yes. yes. Good morning, Pastor Hobbs. Good morning, my brother and sister. How are you? Phenomenal by the grace of God. Amen, yes, yes, amen. he is so inspirational. I he love this sure brother. Is, <laughs> <laughs> I love this it brother. Was, it was it uh, was funny yesterday when um we were on the air and Brother Low had called and I didn't realize it was Brother Low. So I'm listening to this person talking, right? And then all of a sudden I could hear like a background echo saying the same thing. I'm like, oh, that's Brother Low on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> and then when he finishes, I'm expecting to hear Pastor Bruce Wall and I hear you. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was fun. You were saying some good stuff, man. And Pastor had to step away quickly so mm -hmm. he just right. had to just slide right in. Right, right. But right. I was glad, I was glad to be able to be here. It was an excellent um, conversation. Yeah. yeah. Definitely, yeah. you know, so much stuff is going on in our community. It just not, does not make any sense. We have a guest coming in. Her name is Marlena Rose. She um, she's she'll be here shortly, and she's um, from the Boston Education Justice Alliance, and she is working on Save Our Public Schools. And there is so much information that I um, that our, our, our community don't know. Our parents don't know about. These schools, the the Boston Pub, Public versus Charter. There's mm. so much more information that um, people just are not aware of, mm -hmm. and we know that anybody that knows um, about these charter schools know that um, big money is behind these charter schools. You know, yeah, that's true. and it's like they're trying to destroy public education. You know, right, right. you have eight thousand students in charter school, and you have fifty-seven thousand. Boston public schools, but yet you're taking the money from the Boston public schools to fund the charter schools. You know, I always say that these laws that we have are crazy. I mean, it, it, it just doesn't make any sense. And we need to be looking at more people of color running. Um, for office because so they can rewrite some of these laws like that's what legislators do mm -hmm. our state reps and our state senators they are supposed to write laws that help us not there are so many laws on the books that are so old and and don't help us and so I I always say that they need to change these laws you know and a lot of them don't. A lot of people don't um, change the laws. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes. A lot of people do not change these laws. Let me um, yeah, muffle this. Laws um, and uh, legislation is very important. And uh, people from our community need to get more involved in uh, that end of it. And also, the every day-to-day -day operations of what's going on down City Hall. We encourage people from our community to get involved uh, and come down to City Hall and uh, sit in those City Hall chambers and, and uh, find out what's going on in our community. You know, we, we, the BG Report, we sometimes we flip from one subject to another. <laughs> we bounce around a lot. So stay with us. Keep up with us and keep, try to follow us here, okay? <laughs> um, one of the things I want to talk about now, you know, I, I'm talking about the city and the mayor. You know, I'm, I'm really looking uh, for our mayor to really step up. Even more so, um, Marty. Uh, it's a wonderful thing that you you you're walking through the the community, um, but it's, that's not enough, uh, Mayor. It, it, you know, just walking through the community is not enough. Uh, we need some real plans uh, on what we're going to do 
to stem the tide of violence, you know. We still have the highest rate of unemployment in our community. And, um, you know, Boston is boasting the most construction it has in, since the, its existence. So, it, you know, one and one makes two. Uh, we, we really need uh, some plans and, you know, how you're going to deal with, with our ongoing problem. Now, I'm, I, I'm personally bothered by the fact that we have declared a state of emergency. Our children are dying. We are still on a state of emergency. We want to let you know, just because you said it's not a state of emergency, doesn't mean that we don't feel that it's a state of emergency. And by the way, our telephone number is 617-282-0685. That's 617-282-0685. And you can call in and Marty, your staff, or you, you can call in, Marty. I welcome you to call in this morning to uh, tell us what is your real plan? I mean, I didn't realize you're meeting with some chosen people of our community. Chosen few. A chosen few. And, you know, that bothers me too, Marty, because the people who have requested a meeting with you, you have failed to meet with. And to me, it, it just doesn't work out. I mean, you go to meet with a chosen group, yet we have a group of people that is waiting for your to meet with you, and you have, haven't found the time to meet with them. I don't understand what's going on with that, Marty, but that's a problem. So, once again, this is the Boston Praise Radio and the BG Report. BG is the Black Economic Justice Institute. And I also want to speak to our people. You know, we have a lot of organizations in our community that are coming together, and it's a wonderful thing. But we got to get rid of them, that ism and schisms that we got. You know, we oftentimes, we get together and we, everyone, a lot of people involved have other ulterior motives, and which stops our progress. You know, people of color, and I'm speaking specifically about black people in our city, in our, you know, we can't always blame the other guy. You know, we got to look at what we do and what we don't do. And, and you know, it's funny because... A lot of these organizations have already started up and they've been around, but it seems like it seems like there's an internal thing where, I don't know if it's power thing or ego or what it is, but we have problems uh, reuniting and I think that that is what stops our growth. It stops us from progressing. So let's look in inwardly. And, and not so much outwardly right now. And, and let's try to fix the problems that we, as black people, black men and women, have. I mean, we have I mean, some crazy stuff. Even in terms of me, and, and I'm fortunate enough to have a wife that works with me. Uh, she's my body god. She's my, my brain. She's, she's everything to me. And she's an you know, integral part of why I do what I do. Um, and yet... We get slack because we're a, 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 a black couple that's striving to do things in the community. You'd be surprised how many people, you know, don't really appreciate that and don't really encourage us. But, you know, by the grace of God, we're going to go on anyway. And we want people to know and you're out there and you're in our circle and you don't have good intentions. We're going to pray for you because we, we have a God. We serve a God that tells us don't worry about nothing. Don't worry about nobody. So if you, you are not with it, it's going to come out in the wash sooner or later anyway. That's so true. Um, unfortunately, you know, we, you know, we as people um, of black people, especially black American people, we have issues among ourselves we have issues with other people but we need to get ourselves together first we need That's to right. work together That's and right. come together as one united front i i just it just really bothers me that we can't work together i mean there's some of us that are trying and we're really coming to the table but then there's a lot of us that aren't you know they just you know they're just hating on us you know and um but you know what the black economic justice institute was birthed out of a love for our community and a love for our people and we're going to keep doing it as long as we have breath in our body we're going to keep doing it we're going to keep 
um, holding the mayor accountable. We're go- we have to get up to the state house to hold the governor accountable. What are you doing up there? You know, we have to hold our state legislators a- a- accountable. We have three races and no, no one's con- con- contesting them. Russell Holmes is not being contested. Sonia Chan Diaz is not being contested. And Linda Dorsino Floyd is not being contested. And yet, you know, we see them at different meetings and things like that. But what are you doing? What laws are you writing to change the conditions of our people? You know, and so this is what has to happen. We, um, the Black Economic Justice, is working on having a, a community forum, hopefully um, sometime in August, where we would have the three um, people that are, are running for office um, for um, for um, Representative Gloria Fox seat. There's a race. We have a call? Yeah. Good morning, Carl. You're on the air. Good morning, my loves. Good, Good morning. morning, mother. Good morning, mother. <laughs> Evan Collier. Um, yeah, you know, when you when you first came, oh, excellent. The, 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 what you're saying this morning, excellent. And uh, when you were talking about the law and how um, the, the, how the um, elected officials, one thing, one question I have been wanting to find out, if Madeline O'Hare could take prayer out of the schools, one woman could take prayer out of the schools. What can we do to get it back in? I this is a question that I have I have thought on and thought on, and um, that's the question I want to ask. But um, very good. What the dialogue that you and your husband have gone on this morning? That's needed, and it is so excellent. Excellent, sister. Thank that's you, the mother. That I wanted to, if you could. If somebody could call in and tell me how we could do it, I think that would be a a, a step towards us in unity with the black people that's in the community coming together to do something. Right. <laughs> Amen, mother. You know what we? You know I don't know how ballot questions get on the ballot, but that's something that we can investigate huh. because yeah. I think they should bring rent control back. You know, I, I, yeah, um, I would be I would be willing to try to. I tried to go and and to try to go and do that because yeah, I know the law is for the lawless ones. Right. The law wasn't made for, for a righteous man and for us, but the law working within the law, we're supposed to be working with them. Right. So right. I, that's one thing that I said. I would I would go and see. Maybe I could go to one of my elected officials and find out how you get it on there. Definitely. Exactly, you mother. Definitely don't do forget about the meeting tonight at one twenty. Oh, Humble no, Ave. You know, I'm on it. I'm okay. on it. All right. <laughs> that's baby. that's a question that we can find out. Yeah. How do oh, we bring that's prayer? Right. That's right. How that's do we bring p- prayer back into school? Yeah. Because you yeah. notice when they took prayer out, everything all heck broke loose. You know. Not because um, the devil was the devil was the one that was doing it. He was sitting back <laughs> grinning right. while we doing nothing. That's right. Exactly. I had a friend that said, as long as there's tests, there will be prayer in school. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> because, okay. okay. All right, Thank mother. You, mother. And I can't, I can't wait to um, Sister Marlene come in because she knows so much about this, this, this information about the child of schools. You know, um, it's it's just amazing how you know we. So we have this meeting um, every Thursday with the local organizing committee. I'm the LOC, and there's um, freeze Justice frame. Justice or else? That's huh? Justice or else? Yeah, the um, the 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 organ the organization that organized Justice or else, and we have um, there's a lot of different organizations that are at the table, and we do we have a call. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Good morning, Sister Priscilla, Brother Banks, and Brother Hobbs. Yes. Good morning, morning Terrence Williams. Morning. How are you this morning, brother? I'm blessed not to be stressed oh. working in this heat with all this mess. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a poet and he don't know it. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm not going to test. Go ahead, um, Terry. Someone just sent me a text that said they would donate $1,000 to my campaign. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, 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 the answer to um, 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 Mother Collier's uh, uh, question about how you get the ballot for us. Um, you have to uh, first put it, um, write it up, um, and give it to one of your state officials, mm-hmm. um, and have them um, give it to the law department so they can write it up the right way. Mm-hmm. The way you have to get petitions 
Yeah, right. and you have to get signatures for it, uh, for something to make the ballot. You have to get a certain amount of signatures for it to make the ballot. Right. How, do you know um, how many signatures we need, um, brother? Well, Jones? if I'm not mistaken, um, mm. don't quote me. But I mm. think you're probably looking at probably like ten thousand because you're talking about statewide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so you're probably talking about like ten thousand. I uh, think that's trying to do for Boston. Uh, uh, if you're trying to get on on, on a ballot for uh, uh, for Boston. Um, I'm not sure, mm -hmm. you know, but it all depends on, on I guess, with, um, if you're trying to do it uh, abroad or you're trying to do it just local. Yeah, that's a good question because I remember last year when we were working around the sick pay and it, it was a, it was a statewide um, initiative and we were able to do it. I don't know how many signatures we had to get, but you know what, I'm going to think I'm going to call Lou Finfer because he knows a lot about those ballot questions and things like that. And that's another thing. We got some ballot questions on the on, on there this morning. I mean, not on this morning, but on um, September. Yeah, there's, I think there's a question around there's a question definitely about the cap um, and I yeah. think that's in November. Question about the marijuana. Um, yes, and then there's um a couple other questions. And one thing, I don't understand why they don't write these questions in plain English. You know... Um, because if it's written in plain English, then it won't get passed. Right. No, if it's written in plain English, people will understand what they're, what they're doing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> you, know what, you know what, Terrence? I mean, I think this is... Uh, I just idea just came to my head. You know, the Black Economic Justice Institute, we're always interested in, in teaching uh, and having classes in our community. I think you being a member of the Black Economic Justice Institute, and we appreciate that, um, should maybe we could get together and talk about a class where we can teach people how to go about, you know, the ins and outs of, of writing laws and legislation. Right. You know, you know, you know what, brother? That sounds great. But the first thing we got to do, we got to teach them all how to come out. <laughs> Okay. That's a you know what cause, because that's the easiest thing to do. It's just for you to walk out your door and just come on out. Right. Well, you right. know, you can't get everybody, but I think. Well, you know, you know what? You know, and I don't, I'm not expecting to get everybody, but I'm least expecting to get seventy five percent. If I get seventy five percent, we, you know what? Boston will be ours. Massachusetts, we know, will be ours. I mean, I mean ours. I mean the righteous people. I don't mean blacks. I mean the righteous people. It will be ours. You know, because everybody who's, at, you know, in here trying to make, you know, laws and pass things and giving people tax breaks and this company tax breaks. Well, God, Doug, I own two properties. Can I become a corporation and get a tax break? <laughs> you sure can if it's... If it's I'm it's, telling I, you. I, you know, I, I'm just saying, you know, I mean, you know, it's, you know, we, we, as, you know, and you, and you hear me on the mind. Like I, I've been saying it, you know, every, for years and years and years. It's too many people out there who want to be chiefs. It's too many people out there who want to say, I, 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 I. And you know what? Right now, I'm going a, I'm to a split this down the line. Because I'm going to put our sisters to the side and let our sisters have a seat. All right? Now I'm going to talk to the brothers who have these egos, these, you know, these testosterone, these whatever they got going on for themselves that are not stepping up to the plate, that always want to be in front of the camera like they're on GQ and Ebony <laughs> Magazine to get their pictures taken or, or, or slot and in Hollywood that won't come out and be on the forefront. Be out there for the people. We don't need you when something happens. We don't need you when Channel 5 and Channel 4 say, okay, you know what, we're going to arrive on the scene and you don't show up. You know, I mean, everybody's all, you know, is, is, is being bamboozled. Yes, okay, you know what, it's a tragedy hit in Dallas. But you know what, before that tragedy hit in Dallas, we had two other tragedies and plus on that happened within that week. And nobody's talking about it. Everybody focuses on what happened in Dallas. Okay, yeah, there was a lot of forcing. But won't you focus on the bad cops? Because if you're going to stereotype black folks on, 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 on what one does 
and put us all in a category, then you have to, you know what, then why check the Cosby stereotype on the bad ones that's there? Because when you put your right hand up, when you are sworn in as a police officer, you have, you sworn to serve and protect. That's so true. From the so- righteous, from the evil. That's true. And here you have the, the this buddy that you're walking with, that you're riding with, you know, beside you that are doing evil, and and yet you say nothing. That is so true, Terrence. And um, I'm gonna have to cut you short because I guess is in. But keep on listening, and you can call back if you like. Thank you so much, Thank brother you very Terrence. Much, Terrence. We appreciate you. And by yeah, the way. Sir. And by the way, we're going to have to start with that class first, brother. I know you're talking about all that. We're going to have to tab that class first. All right, yes, sir. I, well, you know, I'm with you, brother. Whatever you, you want to do, let's do it. You know, know my thing is, is, you know what? I mean, we all talk about, okay, you know what? You know, you know yeah, we want to come together. And I, you know, and then, but before I leave, I just want to say this. Don't talk to me about ISIS. Until you get the KKK. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. I, hear I you, know Terrence. that's right. Also, Terrence, there's a um, meeting, a LOC meeting tonight at 120 Humboldt Ave. So try to make it. I'll, we'll talk later about the. Well, 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 well yeah, I talked to you offline about that because right. I got, um, you know, BNBL started up. So. Oh. Okay. What happened? What started? BNBL. Oh, all right, Terrence. Watch the neighborhood basketball. Oh, all right, yeah. Terrence. We'll talk to you later. By brother. the way, you yeah. mentioned briefly, uh, Terrence, uh, the South. I don't know if a lot of people know that there was a black man found hanged in Piedmont Park in, in, the, in Georgia. Yes, yeah. yes. You know, you know, and that's, and that's another thing about black. Listen, if you don't stand there and let somebody put a rubber bar on your neck and you ain't fighting and you know you you, you kicking and screaming, you know, like somebody you now listen. You know what? So big. Because God, darling, listen, if, if, if I'm going to die, I'm taking a whole lot of folks with me. I hear you. <laughs> All right, Brother Terrence, you take care, brother. All right. Thanks, Terrence. Yes. Okay. We have our new our guests in the studio, and uh, we'll give her a chance to introduce herself. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm good. good. I'm good. I'm so glad you were able to make it today. Thank you. Yeah, Thank it was you. A little I mix apologize up. That's for okay. the lateness. That's okay. That's all right. That's all right. You're here. So um, introduce yourself, your organization, mm-hmm. and we were at the meeting yesterday. So. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. So yeah. you got some inf- good yes. information. Yes, you got some real good information. Very good. Yes. Very okay. good. Yeah. My name is Marlena Rose, and I coordinate the Boston Education Justice Alliance. And basically, Beja, a.k.a. Yeah, Beja. Right. Yeah. And Beja is simply a coalition of uh, students, parents, teachers, and, and interested community members like your folks, like you folks who are um, just want to make an improvement in the mm-hmm. Boston public schools. We want our children to learn in a way that supports whatever their learning abilities are. Um, we want to make sure that the same services, supports, and programs that are happening in the suburbs are happening here in Boston and beyond, and across right. the state. Right, right. That that that's so and that's true. a beautiful thing. I mean, I mean, we can't have enough organizations such as your organization um, mm-hmm. doing what you're doing because oftentimes our parents are too busy, you know. And mm-hmm. they really shouldn't be that busy, but you know, unfortunately, some most of all of our families are uh, single parent homes, and mm-hmm. they're so busy trying to survive that they don't have the, the opportunity to take the time to really look into what's really going on in our schools. So I commend you on your efforts to try to keep people informed and involved. Thank you so much, and and I want to say that it's it's not an organization; it's a coalition. Okay, so there okay. are some wonderful groups, mm-hmm. including you, including <laughs> including Beijing and Beja. Uh, no uh, stopping us now. Uh, right? I know that's that's right. Right. <laughs> um, but there are some great groups and other organizations that are that make up Beja. So okay. there's the Union of Minority Neighborhoods. Okay, there's that's Harris NAA- Smalls. Harris Smalls. Yeah. Okay. There's the NAACP recently signed on oh, to Beja. Uh-huh. Um, there are parent groups that mm-hmm. are supporting it. So there are parents who are active. Um, there's a, a group called Quest, mm-hmm. uh, a parent group, really, really dynamic group of parents who actually um, took many, many months to dig up those those emails mm-hmm. be- that came up about um, the charter school issues and, right, and, and right. Um, not talking about school closings and all of that. Right, so that's right. that's a that's a dynamic uh, 
group that's a, a member of Beja. There's there's uh, CEQE. Mm -hmm. um, so there are all these different parent groups, and then there are youth, the mighty right. mighty youth. Right, the <laughs> mighty mighty three thousand that took it to Boston to, to the um, city hall and the state house. Yes, so yes. there's actually an organized youth component called Young, and they've named themselves. Youth Organizers Uniting for the Now Generation. Wow, yeah, that's right. beautiful. That's great. And that's great. Um, so that's comprised of several different uh, youth groups. There's the Youth on Board, mm -hmm. the Boston Youth Organizing Project, and the Boston Student Advisory Council. Mm -hmm. Great. That's so great. So there are all of these folks working together, and um, we never have enough folks, and you get in where you fit in. That's right. right. That's, that's right. right. So, Marlena, we know that there's a ballot question coming up um, in um, November about the uh, public schools versus the charter schools and i'm finding that what they try to do is pit the public school parents against the the charter school parents and mm -hmm. i think that from going to the meeting yesterday at the teachers union and listening to a parent that actually experienced um having a child being suspended 16 times mm -hmm. in kindergarten mm -hmm. okay um, and she she took a, a approach that she asked for help, you know. And so I and she was a child of school. She, her child was in child of school. She mm -hmm. said she had to. They, I don't know if they if they put the child out. She took him out. I don't know exactly remember all that. But she said her child made it to the first grade. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, it is a shame and a disgrace before God when you are suspending five-year-old babies. Absolutely. Five-year-olds are babies, okay? Absolutely. And it, it bothers me that we have all these child schools popping up, and mm -hmm. a lot of parents are like, the child school is the best thing since sliced bread. And a lot of people don't know all the details, you know? Mm -hmm. And so so could you tell us a little bit about this about because yeah. we want to keep the cap we don't want to be inundated with all these with all these charter schools we have enough of them yes and the and the funding and how all, so mm -hmm. do your thing so, <laughs> <laughs> um so the the first thing i want to say is is beige's position is that we want quality schools mm -hmm. for all students mm -hmm. And in, in making that statement, it's not charter versus public. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about charter schools and, and, and saying charter versus public, we, I feel and I, I find in this work has alienated some parents mm -hmm. who have put their children in charter schools thinking that that is the best thing for right. their child. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. And for some children, it does work. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Um, so we never want to, to insult a parent for their right. choice right. to put right. a, right. a child right. in a charter school. That's right. mm -hmm. I also want to say that I am a parent who um, 10 years ago put my daughter in a mm -hmm. charter school thinking that I had won the lottery. You know, right, it was a lottery right. to get into the charter school and right, I thought I, I had know. won the lottery. Oh, my daughter's good. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm a youth worker mm -hmm. and I've been a youth worker for many years and so I, I spend a lot of time in the evenings with other people's children. Right, right. And so I felt that I was getting my child into an environment that would support her mm -hmm. while I was supporting my community. Right. And that turned out not to be the case. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm one of those one of those people, one of those parents who suffered under the charter mm. um, system. But I want to say that as Beja focuses on quality schools for all children, we want to keep the cap on charter schools because they by and large do not serve communities mm -hmm. of color mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they buy they they definitely don't serve uh students with learning disabilities right. very few and if they do and when they say that they serve students with ieps indiv individualized education oh. plans it's those most high functioning students mm -hmm. wow we We're have a uh i'm sorry i don't mean to cut you off but we have a caller good morning caller you're on the air Yes, good morning. This is T. Michael Thomas of the People's Academy. Good morning, Brother Law. Good, good morning, Pris Sister Priscilla. Good morning, T. Mike. Good morning, T. Mike. How you doing? Uh, I wanted to add to um, this conversation. I'm not going to go to the other one um, so I can make it quick. Um, we have to, we're forgetting that we are, like, for instance, us right now, a product of the busing. And the, uh, like I've said in my poem, the ones that thought us never really liked us. These are people that are teaching our children, and within themselves, they're, they're racist, they're hateful. The only reason it's not on the surface is because of certain federal laws, but their feelings and their thoughts about us has not changed. It's just put in a back room because publicly now they can't express it. Mm. 
Wow. You're right. Mm-hmm. Do, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, so, you're, right. Yeah. you're right, Mike. So and you, this is why, too, the, um, the unemployment situation in our community with the jobs, with the policing, um, you know, not sitting down with Mamelio, even with BGs for the wages, it's been a personal attack on people of color. And we continue to look the other way because they're not calling us the N-word to our face. But systemically, they have not changed. Mm. When it's systemically, when it comes to employment, jobs, um, if you know, the human rights, things like that. But that's what I wanted to add to that. So we have to get back into the real grassroots and remember they have not changed. These are the product of the people that was throwing rocks at us going to school just to get an education to better ourselves. Great show. I will be listening. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thank T. Mike. Uh, we're going to go to a, a break, and uh, we'll be right back. Hi, this is Leon Rock, also known as the Community Development Guru here in the nation's capital of Washington, D.C. As a Bostonian, I'm always thinking about about my hometown and the work that needs to be done to bring about economic justice in Boston. That's why even though I've lived in the metro Washington, D.C. area for some time, I continue to support my hometown. Yes, I support the Celtics and the Patriots and all of my, yes, Boston teams, but I also support a great Boston team, and that is the Black Economic Justice Institute. The Black Economic Justice Institute, and yes, you should do the same. Remember, no one is going to help us but us. Don't forget to visit the Black Economic Justice Institute's website at B-E-J-I-I dot org. And also visit my website at communitydevelopment.guru. Yes, that's communitydevelopment.guru. Have a good day. Back to the program. also being sponsored by One United Bank and we are um, going to be developing a partnership with One United Bank but right now they are sponsoring um, our um, BG report and so we thank them and next week we'll actually have um, Terry Williams on who is the president of One United Bank so back to Marlena and this ballot question and I know it's not um, you know that they I, the system is, is really a mess because I remember when the um, the con, uh, conservatory lab child of school was trying to be um, coming to um, the Bartlett Yard project through um, Nuestra. Nuestra went out, so now they had a project that they they had already approved the project, and Nuestra went and and um, solicited this school. They have um, I think one of their um, Schools is in Brighton and one is in um, up near Connie Hospital. And some kind of way they convinced these people that the community would wanted that that um, charter school there. And so they pit, literally pit the community against these charter school parents. And finally, when they realized that the community was not going to back down, they, they withdrew. But it was, and Tito Jackson said, told um, New Estra, D, uh, David Price, the executive director, you were wrong for doing that, you know, because they bring them in, they have on their T-shirts, and they made, but we were saying, we don't mind a child of school, but this is not the space for it. This was supposed to be something else, you know? And so tell us about, you know, some of the reasons why the, the child of schools um, hurt Boston public schools. Okay, so we, our position is that um, 
in terms of getting quality quality schools for all children, charter schools are a tremendous drain mm-hmm. on the Boston public school budget. Right. So right. there are approximately eighty two hundred charter school students mm-hmm. in Boston. There are fifty seven thousand Boston public school systems. We're talking about a small percentage of students who are served by these charter schools. Mm, and they take a lot of the resources. And they take a tremendous amount of the resources um, from the Boston public schools. Um, When we're talking about where a charter school is located, the community actually has no say in that. Mm -hmm. It's where DESE, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, decide it should go. Mm -hmm. Unless there is an uproar, such as happened at Bartlett Bus Station, Mm -hmm. that charter was going to go in. And if you notice, there's one, there are two on Warren Street. Exactly. And the that neighborhood is being quickly yep. gentrified. That exactly. whole Bartlett and Fort Hill area is being quick, quickly gentrified. So we need to look at where these charter schools are being placed. Right. And they're building one in Mattapan Square there, also. There are several in Mattapan. Right. And it's funny because Council Yancey for 20 years tried to get a, a public high school and could not get it. But yet you got mm-hmm. all these charter schools popping mm-hmm. up. Mm-hmm. So... So, so to continue of why we're opposed to the charter schools, they don't serve all students, mm-hmm. um, particularly ELL students, English language learners, and mm-hmm. students uh, with special needs, where Boston Public Schools must serve all of these students. Right, right. And so uh, um, we are also opposed because of the harsh discipline policies that are levied on children, especially children of color, mm-hmm. especially our black and brown boys. Very few black and brown boys ever graduate from a charter school nationally. Um, The policies are not designed for our children. They're designed to to those that that, uh, conform well. Right, right. Um, And there are some of our children that we know who who have experienced some life experiences aren't conducive to standing silently for eight hours a day or sitting silently for eight hours. When I hear about what they do to these kids, it's ridiculous. If you... Drop a pencil on the floor. Absolutely. If you look a teacher in her face, yeah. you know they, they call it the broken window. It's called the broken the broken window window effect, and and essentially it's to punish you for the small things so that the big things never happen. That don't even make good sense. It doesn't make good sense. It also. Um, as I said, I was a charter parent, and my daughter would come home and say, oh, mommy, you have to get this sign, or I'm going to get a demerit. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, you're not. Mm-hmm. If mm-hmm. I don't sign it, that is on me. That is not on you, and it has nothing to do with your education, and you should not be penalized. Mm-hmm. Um, and my daughter, um, as I noticed her education it was happening, she was still, she was testing well, but mm-hmm. she began to talk about being the daughter of an organizer. She began to talk about things that were happening with her fellow students. So when you talk about dropping a pen on the floor, she came home with the story one day. Oh, um, my, my friend just got suspended. I said, why? She said, well, the teacher walked by and knocked the pen off the child's desk. Mm-hmm. And the, the child got up to pick it up. And the teacher said, oh, that's a demerit for getting up out of your seat. And the child tried to explain, but you knocked it on the floor. Mm-hmm. And the teacher said, out of, the, out of my classroom, you're suspended for talking back to the teacher. Unbelievable. There's no opportunity to dialogue. There, there is a stifling. In my child's school, which at the time, Roxbury Preparatory Charter School, was the worst school in uh, Massachusetts in terms of suspensions and expulsions. Um, they suspended children until they just gave up, and until the parents gave up. Um, parents also experience a great deal of trauma. Calls every day. I remember as my daughter started to rebel, not, not for herself, but for the injustices that she was seeing um, in the classroom. I got a call every day at 3.30. I'm doing my work. I'm, I'm in an organization. Mm-hmm. And I know around 3.30 I start getting fidgety because I know I'm going to get a call. Uh, my daughter's done something, some menial thing that, you know, I'm, and I'm asking the questions, what does that have to do with her education? Oh, she, mm. she stepped to the left when everybody else was supposed to step to the right. And? Foolishness. So, it, and, and they, it's kind of their way to monitor to see which children will comply, which parents will comply. It seems to me like they're, they're teaching our children to be workers and not they thinkers. Absolutely, I, I believe that. 
that's what I believe so, as an individual. I believe that that is 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 part of the parent of the pattern that happens within charter schools. The other thing about charter schools is, by and large, they do not hire teachers of color. They do not hire experienced teachers many times. And they do not have boards with parents on them. Their boards, uh, well, they do have boards with parents, but those boards are in the suburbs. So, yeah, because I heard there's not a lot of schools, uh, charter schools in the suburbs. There are, there are not a lot of charter schools in the mm -hmm. suburbs, but those that are in the suburbs have parent participation and parent input. Right. The boards in, in the inner city mm -hmm. have uh, bank managers and real estate developers and hedge funders on the board. So this is not about our children. Nobody with educational experience or background to decide on the, ch the child's um, education. It's about the property. It's about how much money the school can make. It's not about the child. This doesn't make any sense. This is horrible. I'm thinking. So if you, so if your child, if your child goes to a charter school, we know that most charter schools they they start earlier and they close later. So I'm thinking maybe some of these parents just want to have a place where their child can go to school, where they don't have to worry about the child, you know, being able to having to pick the child up in the middle of the day, or. Um, having to leave to take the child you know the child may not be able to go to an after school program right. or something like that because to me it seems like child of school kids go to school just as long as the parents have to work well, as, as with Mecco you know the kids are up early and they get home late uh -huh. but you know Marlene this is really disturbing to me this is you know this really really bothers me I, I both of my children passed away at a young age my son my first son died at four in a fire, and my second son died at seven in a car accident. My second son went to the Josiah Quincy School, mm -hmm. and we lived in the South End in Castle Square. And I remember, I would pop up every once in a while in that school to see what was going on. Mm -hmm. And I was thankful because he had black teachers. Mm -hmm. And I think that we need more black and brown teachers. But why is it so, that tells you right then and there, if there's not a lot of teachers of color that look like our students what does that say you know i mean how can you have white women teaching our children who don't understand our children a lot of our kids are, 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 are big for their age like you I, I know a 15 year old child right now mm -hmm. that look like he's 24 okay and he mm -hmm. is having a hard time in school okay and his mother is doing everything she can to get him you know, to where he needs to be. But this just young man looks like an adult. Mm -hmm. And I feel like sometimes these teachers are intimidated by them, you know? And so this this broken window syndrome, to me, needs to be thrown out the window. Mm -hmm. What What is it that brought the, the question to the ballot? Because we were just asking about how do questions get on the ballot. Was, a, was there petitions assigned by a lot of people, parents and stuff throughout the state that says, we can't decide on this, so we have to put this on the ballot. How does that work? Well, you know, there, the, the attempt to increase the amount of charter schools is, is listed as um, an attempt to have better schools for our students. What is wrong with supporting the student, supporting the schools that we have right now? Exactly. If it, it, you know, we need to fix what we have instead of bringing in more Something charter brand schools. brand new. And so the charter school issue got on the ballot because... The corporations and the folks that actually run the charter schools mm -hmm. um, and these charter schools are under none of the the um, regulatory guidelines leads, of the, yeah. or the regulations of right. the Boston public schools. They run independently. Right. And so when you've got this. But yet they get Boston public schools money and, and they're publicly funded, publicly that, funded private institutions that do not serve the cherry pick and serve who they want on our dollar. Um, so. The ballot came about because they're, these folks, these corporations, and they're heavily funded by the Gates and the Waltons, want to expand the charter schools. And, and we're talking here in Boston, but Boston needs to take the lead from New Orleans, from Denver, from Chicago, from New Jersey. This is not working. This charter school expansion is not working in states across the country. So why should we towns. do it here? Why should we do it here? And if you want to break it down, if, if you mentioned that there are not a lot of charter schools in the suburbs, 
things of quality, I'm just going to put it out there, things of quality come to the white neighborhoods first. Mm -hmm. If the white neighborhoods do not have an abundance of charter schools, why should the black neighborhoods? Why should communities of color? If they ain't got it, then it must not be that good because exactly. they have it first. I, exactly. I'm just going to put that out there and say mm -hmm. that. And so while parents who have children in charter schools, and I was one of them, I, should, I feel that I should have dug a little deeper. And even if my daughter had been served, I needed to know more about what the effects were for all of my people, all of my students, not just my daughter. Mm -hmm. And I think that people should really do some research on what is happening across the state. Check out Chicago, check out New Jersey, check out New Orleans, and see what charter schools has done in those states and see if you want it to come to your state and to Boston. I know there was a movie that we were watching. It was called The Lottery. It's a documentary about in New York about the, the child of schools because it is a lottery system. But, you know, I don't think it's so much also as a lottery system. I think they pick and choose. But I'm very upset because because there's 87% of our, our children, black and brown, go to these charter schools. But yet when the, when the kids fail or not fail but get kicked out for whatever reason and they go back into the Boston Public School, the money don't go back with them. The money does that not does not them. make any kind of sense. So these policies that are written, that's why I say we need legislators that will write, rewrite policies that work for us and not hurt us. Absolutely. But when, when people are talking about how bad Boston Public Schools are, as I just said, you need to dig a le little deeper because you need to know how the funding is being cut. Thousands That's why people. they're not doing well because they don't have the funding. They I heard Jessica, and I know this for, has been happening for a long time because I know teachers um, that have actually take their own money, their own money and buy pencils and buy notebooks and buy. You know, when I went to school, I, I didn't take bring my mother no long list of stuff that she had to go to the store and buy. Mm -hmm. You know that's and so. Boston, um, wherever you're listening to us from, we need to get on this. There's going to be a question on the ballot in November. It's going to go on November. We want you to vote no on two. It is not. It is because charter schools do not serve all of our students. That's right. They do not. They they do not hire teachers that look like us. They disproportionately penalize our children. And when they send our children back, that money that is allotted for each child does not come back into the Boston Public Schools. So your child is going back into BPS with less money in that particular school to serve your child. So a teacher is lost, a librarian is lost, a program is lost, materials and books are lost, or, or the facilities are not being cared for as well as they could because of this drain. Right. So you hear that. Vote no on question two. So we need to, what, what we should do, I think, as the Black Economic Justice Institute, we're, we are really thinking about having a forum around some of the electoral um, candidates. And um, I think that we need to find out, and I'm going to call mass vote, and see how we can get um, some information about these ballot questions so that we can start disseminating the information to our community and letting them know exactly what is going on and what to vote for and 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 what not to what to not to vote for but as far as these ballot questions right. i'm talking about well, there, there's a campaign in place right now it's called save our public schools mm -hmm. and the sops campaign um and you can go to save our public schools ma save our public schools mass dot com um, to actually begin to get to sign on and to get more information. And it will talk about the facts and figures around how much money is drained um, by the charter schools. Over 400 million across Massachusetts this wow. year was drained from the Boston Public Schools. So mm. when, you're, you're th when we're talking about money, I think people need to understand the scope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So thousands of people marched, we need more money in the budget, we need this and that. Mm. And, and, the yeah. and Mayor Walsh put $4.7 million in the budget right before the vote by the city council. Wow. Of that $4.7 million, I don't know the exact figures, but maybe the point seven actually went <laughs> into the schools. Right. The, West, the rest went into administration. It did not trickle down to the schools. So people need to understand the scope of money when, it, when, when the mayor adds these pennies, mm -hmm. literally mm -hmm. pennies, right. mm -hmm. compared to the budget. Right. He added, he added 4.7, but we're still 25, mil, 25 million short 
in the Boston Public Schools budget. So don't don't be fooled by the, the word million. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we also need to, um, I think we, we need <clears throat> to find out what city councilors voted for that budget and which ones didn't. You know, Boston, it's time for us to let these elected officials know who they work for. They work for us, and we need to get out and get to these polls and vote them out. Vote them out, fire them. I'm I'm so serious. This is crazy. I am a product of Boston Public School, and so I know that Boston Public Schools can be good, but you got to have parent involvement. And I always say, for parents, if you and because a lot of our parents are working two and three jobs, so they can't be running up to the school every day when you call because Johnny dropped a pencil, you know. So this if. This is really, this boils my, I mean, it just really boils my blood. And I know that we're really <coughs> running out of time. No on two. And so, um, no on two. We'll take him, we'll take him, we'll take him. We have a caller. Yeah. Good Hello, morning. Hello, caller. Good morning. Hello, hey, caller. once again, uh, Tito Jackson, Ayanna Presley, Andrea Campbell, and Anissa George are the ones that voted uh, against the budget. Yet. Wow, isn't that oh, something? Thank you, too. Thank you, Terrence, thank for you, letting Terrence. us know. Yes. Okay, so now we know who needs to go, okay? Yeah. All the other ones. That's right. And uh, <laughs> give out that, uh, Mr. Rose, give out your, your information yes. again, please. Um, so it's the bostonedjustice.org is our, is our website. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, my number is 617-708-4685. My name is Marlena Rose, coordinator for the Boston Education and Justice. And tell them where your office is in case they want to come We're by. We're at 3353 Washington Street out of the Jobs with Justice office mm -hmm. in JP, right across from the police station. And so if people want to get involved with this campaign. And you it, should. Yes, um, because we, we, you know, we have to. I know you have your meetings every Thursday. Where are your meetings at? We, we've got one uh, tonight, kind of a summer campaign uh, cook-off, kick-off cook-out. <laughs> little tongue twister there. Right, right. Um, at the First Church of Roxbury, uh, 10 Putnam Street. You should um, get on our newsletter to find out where these meetings are. We like to go throughout the different neighborhoods to familiarize people. And in terms of becoming involved with the campaign, we say get in where you fit in. You may not be able to make a march or a rally, but you can make a phone call to the mayor's office That's right. and That's say, right. I don't like what's happening. Right. Or you can write a letter. Or there are different ways. You can attend a meeting. You can get a little bit if you're an active parent who wants to, to really support um, improving our public schools, take a training with us and learn what's happening and be able to go out and talk to your neighbors, host a house party and have parents talk about it and figure out how we can get together. This isn't just about education. It's about social justice. That's right, it's exactly. about the work That's that right. you all are doing. Right. Mm -hmm. It's about the work that other groups are doing. It's, a, it's around the work of Black Lives Matter and the, and the things that they're doing. This is all connected. It's not separate. It's That's not. We're talking not about education, <clears throat> right. but this is about black lives, black, brown lives, people That's right. of color That's lives. Right. Um, that are being destroyed by corporations and folks that don't care about That's right. us. Exactly. So we're encouraging you once again. This is BG and Bija, and we are both <laughs> encouraging uh, our community to get involved. I mean, you may not have time to do everything. Everyone has a, a, a life. We have things we can't do, but there are things we can do. And it's something as simply as talking with your your neighbors, encourage them think them to make phone calls, coming down city hall, seeing what's going on. We need to step up in our community, especially the black and brown community, Roxbury, Dorchester, Mattapan. For over twenty years, we have had the highest rate of unemployment in our community. We need to make a change, and it's not going to happen just because we want to. We have to get involved. So please. Once again, we're going to mention that website again. BostonEdJustice.org. Um, we're the Boston Education Justice Alliance. And we're